In our last video, we saw how to evaluate the available NPSH of a pumping installation so that we could compare it to the pump required NPSH and check if there was any possibility of cavitation. But it ended with a question. There are cases in which we still don't have the pump chart. We're still running preliminary studies, but it's important to know if elevations are okay. Can we estimate the required NPSH value? Good question was the answer, but we said that we'd leave it for the next video. Well, this is the next video, let's fulfill our promise. But let me introduce myself. My name is Marcus, I'm a retired professor of hydraulics. Now I'm a consultant engineer of many companies that deal with hydraulic supply to sanitation works. Ok, now this is the system that we are studying, two pumps that run in parallel and a third one on standby. We know the pump chart, the total flow and the contribution of each one of the pumps, that will be half of the total flow. For this contribution, we found that the corresponding required NPSH would be 0.65 meters. Now this is what happens at the section of each pump. When we consider that the absolute head at the section sump is imposed by the atmospheric pressure and we subtract the automatic section head and the section head losses at the suction pipe and fittings, the required NPSH is the value of head that would make the head in the interior of the pump equal to the absolute vapor head. In other words, the available NPSH must be greater than the required NPSH, or cavitation will take place inside the pump. But, as we said, there are cases in which we still don't have the pump chart. What can we do then? Well, let's start with a small change in our nomenclature. We'll use HFB instead of NPSHR to represent the required NPSH. Ok, we can find its value by multiplying the monometric head by sigma, which is the cavitation coefficient. Now, finding its value can be tricky. This diagram shows where we can safely operate the pump if we want to prevent cavitation. For this purpose, we must calculate the specific speed of the pump and try to avoid the danger region. This line is usually safe for practical purposes. So let's use it in our example. Here are the values that we found in our last video. The corresponding specific speed can be calculated. Here it is. The same can be done to the cavitation coefficient. Here is its value. Now we can calculate the value of HFB. And this is what we find. It's not very different of the value that we found for the required NPSH in the pump chart. But for practical applications, it's usually well above it. Whoa, now we have all we need. It seems that we're able to solve any pumping problem. But this specific speed, what is it? And what is it for? Good questions. We'll leave these topics for the next videos. See you there. Oh, and if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like, comment, share and subscribe, hit the bell so you can be notified of my next videos.